Welcome to my nerd lab. I'm going to give you a tour of the lab and show you the basics that you need if you want to start restoring retro computers. Uh, this, is, this is really uh, what you need. You could take it as little or as far as you want. Obviously, I went a little bit overboard, uh, but here's the basics that you need. So first off, you should get yourself a good workstation. So pay attention to anti-static. Uh, this is a, an ESD-specific workstation that's grounded, but they make these mats that you could lay down and convert any uh, work table into an anti-static environment. Uh, but if you have the luxury of space, obviously I, I like to be able to move around and, and uh, but if you're limited, it's understandable, but just make sure you, you focus on anti-static to, uh, to begin with. I've got an anti-static mat on the floor as well that's grounded. Uh, at the minimum, you're going to want to get that mat uh, that, that they make for, for to, to lay down on a, on a workbench uh, that, that you just uh, ground. Uh, so once you got that, uh, get yourself a good pair of uh, pliers, a screwdriver. Uh, the, I like Klein tools a lot, uh, but, uh, but that, it's up to you, it's preference. Uh, get your pair, a pair of snips. Those are really the only three that, that, that cover 99% of, of, of what, I, what, I, what I use for actual, actual hand tools. Get yourself a multimeter. I like the Fluke. This is a very, very simple, common uh, a multimeter. It's good for, for checking traces. In old uh, motherboards, if there's something broken, uh, you can check uh, to make sure there's uh, there's uh, continuity. Uh, but uh, next, I'll I'll check out. Uh, I'll show you the uh, soldering iron that I got. I got the Kesger T12. This actually came recommended to me by an old Apple engineer, and uh, it, it, I actually uh, had the Hako uh, uh, soldering station on order, which was about 400 bucks. And I uh, canceled it. He said, no, cancel it. Get this. It was about $75. Uh, the Kesger T12. I'll put the link in the description of the video. Only downside, it doesn't come with a stand. This is what you're going to use for replacing capacitors. That's like 90% of, uh, of what uh, the, the problems that you'll run into on old circuitry is going to be. Uh, so along with the, the soldering station, get yourself a... Uh, a, a, a this is a copper... Uh, a uh, copper tip cleaner. I like it because when it's gross, you just pull this thing out and and just uh, just replace it. Uh, but there's plenty of soldering videos that'll show you how to how to solder and that kind of stuff. I'm, I won't get into that. But these are the basics that you need. Obviously, some solder, some flux. So you're going to be doing a lot of desoldering, uh, specifically removing the old capacitors from uh, the motherboards and replacing them. Uh, I, I started out using this wick. It's good to know how to use it. It's good for cleaning up things, uh, but it is a pain in the butt to remove capacitors with uh, with uh, soldering wick. So I just picked up this beauty. This is the Hako FR301 desoldering gun. It is freaking awesome. So it just, uh, all it does is it melts the solder. You put it right on the back of the capacitor. You pull the trigger and it sucks the solder right up into it, makes a clean hole, the capacitors just come right out, even on 30, 40 year old solder uh, that, that I've encountered on some of these old motherboards. It's really great. Also, I got myself a, a, a little filter fan. Uh, that's good so you're not breathing in all that melted uh, lead or flux or other toxic stuff that, uh, that, that is put off in the smoke when you're soldering or desoldering. So this is the Amscope, uh, this is an Amscope microscope. Got it off of Craigslist. Got a great deal on it, but uh, new. I, I, I mean, I'll put I'll put the link to it. But you don't need to get any of this stuff new if if you have the time and, and can find it on Marketplace or Craigslist or elsewhere. Uh, but uh, uh, but if me, I'm getting old. My eyes are not what they used to be. Having a good soldering microscope, it, it really comes in handy. I mean, I, I use it all the time, especially when you're trying to find out what's wrong with, with a, a, a piece of circuitry. Looking at it under the microscope really, really helps identify problems. So uh, obviously, uh, there's a, if, you're, if you've already replaced capacitors and you're just getting into it, it's very easy to identify a blown capacitor. It's not always easy to identify uh, where there's a trace that has been damaged, whether it's from a leaking CMOS battery or something else. Uh, but, uh, but get yourself a good microscope eventually. I would highly recommend it. So we'll go on over here uh, to, uh, to, this is, this is uh, a cleaning station that I've got. This is going to be another big chunk of your issues that you run into is just a dirty connection. So uh, get yourself some isopropyl alcohol, a toothbrush, 
and a roll of paper towels. And so whether you're soldering or whether you're just cleaning a connection, uh, you, uh, that's, that's going to run into, you're going to run into a lot of dirty connections. Um, on, the, on the topic of capacitors, I've got the, them organized over here. got myself a little, uh, little $20 organizing uh, uh, shelf uh, drawer. But here is, uh, this is the brand that I would recommend. I ran a, a, a poll and everybody came back, or I should say the majority of people came back, said Nishikan is the brand of capacitors that you're going to want to go with. All right, so that pretty much summarizes what you need to get started in building your own engineering lab to restore some of these retro computers or whatever you're going to be restoring. Uh, I would uh, also recommend getting organized, uh, get yourself some shelving. I've got this boltless shelving. I absolutely love this stuff. Uh, easy to adjust the shelves. Uh, I tell myself if I'm organized, I'm not a hoarder, right? I think that's how it works. So uh, also, I uh, want to point out some of these. Uh, these are the anti-static boxes that I like to keep the stuff in. Uh, those are good. I got my video cards, sound cards, those types of things to make sure they're uh, they're they're kept uh, in in good condition. Um, also, I've got another shelf over here with uh, CRTs, more heavy stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I hope to encourage people to uh, grow the hobby, uh, keep these things out of e-waste, uh, get, get them restored, uh, keep playing video games on them, uh, enjoy it uh, with the next generation, and if you have any questions, please comment. Thank you.